What's good everybody, Chris here again. Chris goes outdoors today in this video. We're gonna talk about some recent new gear pickups. Usually I save all of my major gear purchases until the holiday season comes around. I feel like that's usually when the best deals are kicking and I, uh, I bought some stuff. The most visible will be this. I picked up the Thermarest Polar Ranger negative 20 degree sleeping bag. So I had been using the Nemo Sonic negative 20 degree sleeping bag, the 2018 version. They've made some considerable changes to the 2019-2020 version, and I definitely have some nitpicks with the 2018 one, but it seems they addressed at least a few of them in the more recent versions, uh, but that doesn't really help me much. But I had initially been looking for a Western Mountaineering Kodiak sleeping bag, and I saw a couple online over like a two month span. I was hoping that when the holiday sales came up, I would somehow be able to get a little better deal on them. They're like $700 or something like that. And when I went back, every place I looked at was sold out. So unfortunately that was not an option, but I had seen this wonderful piece of fluffery on uh, Justin Outdoors' channel. Uh, enjoy his channel. He sleeps in some cold stuff too. Uh, New England, New Hampshire, pretty cold as well. So this thing, looked phenomenal to me, uh, mainly because of this. Can you see this? It has the armholes, which I find fantastic. I don't particularly care to light campfires ever, uh, even in the winter, because hiking mountains is hard work and I get very, very lazy at the end of the day. So being able to jump into a negative 20 degree sleeping bag inside my tent and then still be able to do things around my tent seemed pretty cool. The other thing too about this that I enjoy is if you zip it up fully, which you probably won't be able to hear me anymore when I do this, and then you snap the hood closure together, you can see just how well it covers up my head and it just leaves this little port to breathe out of, which is fantastic for warmth. Uh, that was one of the biggest issues I had with the 2018 Hemosonic negative 20. The hood is just gigantic and I felt like air was always getting in. They fixed that and really shrunk the hood on the 2019-2020 um, version. So I don't know if that's still an issue, but in short, this thing had a lot of stuff going for it. I think it's similar weight to, almost identical weight, I believe to the Nemo one. I'll try to put the waist to both of them here. I did have the long version of the Nemo Sonic negative 20. Uh, this is the regular version of the Thermarest Polar Ranger negative 20. Another big benefit of this, I think, is it's much more form fitting, which should help with warmth. It should be easier to kind of warm yourself up in something that's a little more form fitting. The Nemo was a little bit more roomy, which is kind of a pro and a con. It's nice because you can kind of move about a little bit inside of it easier. But at the same time, I feel like it makes it kind of harder to warm the sleeping bag up. I didn't hate the sleeping bag, but I wasn't a massive fan of it. So this looked pretty cool to me. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully I can actually test it out this winter because there's all sorts of weird travel things going on and getting up to New Hampshire might be uh, a little strange. So we'll see. Hopefully we'll be able to test it out this winter though. Excited. I think it's pretty cool. We also picked up this right here. So this wonderful trash bag looking thing is actually a jacket. It is an enlightened equipment apex jacket so I got mine in the large and I'm pretty surprised at the warmth of this thing I got rid of my uh, mountain hardware ghost whisperer I don't think I actually talked about that on the channel and I wanted to try just kind of a lighter jacket anyway with synthetic insulation and enlightened equipment had their sale so I ended up picking this up and uh, I am excited to test that out as well that will be part of my winter kit as well as part of my three season kit for the foreseeable future. So we'll see how that thing performs. But so far, just like wearing it around, testing it out locally has been good. I have not had it out on the trail, so haven't really been able to test it. And I kind of accidentally bought this. And by accidentally, I mean, I was definitely considering buying it, but I added this and a quilt to my shopping cart on the Enlightened Equipment site. Went around, was like playing around with the checkout 
just seeing like with tax and everything, it's like, should I do this? Should I not do this? Uh, back and forth. I checked out with PayPal and it brought me to the next window. So logged into PayPal and then it said continue with PayPal, which in my experience on websites, you hit continue, it brings you to the final checkout screen. Except this didn't bring me to a final checkout screen. It just completed the order. And luckily the shipping address and everything was right. But I had ordered essentially by accident. And in ordering by accident, I also picked up an old friend. Some of you may recall from my AT hiking days, I used this exact same quilt. So I ordered a long, wide, Enlightened Equipment Stock Revelation 20 degree bag. They have made significant increases in the amount of down they put in these since I was using this on the Appalachian Trail, so it should be significantly warmer than the one that I was using at the time, but excited to uh, start using this guy again. I've been using the Catabatic Flex 30 that I got while I was on the Colorado Trail, and it had been working pretty good for me. I picked that up as kind of an emergency situation. The quilt I brought out was a Nemo Banshee. The thing was terrible. And then I contacted Catabatic because I knew that they were Colorado. So I figured they'd be able to get me one super quick. And they did. I sent them an email, asked them how quickly they could get me a long wide, pretty much anything. I was hoping for a 15 or 20 degree, but they said the only one they had in stock was a 30. So that's why I ended up going with the 30 for the Catabatic. And it's been doing pretty well, but I really wanted something in the 20 degree range. I had the flex out on my last two trips and some of the nights were pretty chilly um, and it only got down into the 30s. And that was with using an X-Therm mat. And I consider myself kind of a, a warm sleeper. So I just think for where I hike in New Hampshire, uh, where the temperatures dip pretty low, even in three seasons, that I'll be able to push the Enlightened Equipment 20 a little lower than the Catabatic 30. So we'll see. And then another kind of smaller thing I'm planning on testing out. I bought this right here. This is a Jetboil, I believe it's a Jetboil Zip, which is one of their smaller Jetboil setups. I believe it's 11 ounces for everything. So the stove, the cup, the stand, and the pot and lid. So I picked this up in hopes of using this as my winter cook set. So I had been using the MSR Whisper Light for I think two seasons, maybe, maybe longer, I don't know. And it's worked great, but it's pretty big, it's pretty heavy, and the fuel that you gotta carry around, even that's pretty big. So I wanna test this out and see how if I keep my fuel can like in my jacket, say like an hour before I get to camp or in my sleeping bag while I sleep overnight, if it will be good enough to use to just get the boiling water I need for dinner and boiling water for maybe coffee and some sort of breakfast in the morning. And I think it will, I think it'll be all right. We'll see how it works, see how it, uh, see how it performs. I got this for pretty, pretty cheap overall. So next thing up, Riveting stuff here, uh, another REI sale, just some wool gloves. These are smart wool, wool gloves, but they also have the little electronic contact things in the fingers, which is always nice for when you're out hiking, especially if you use something like a cell phone uh, as an assistant for GPS navigation. So pick those up as well. Picked up the snow claw right here, which is just kind of a, a little handheld shovel so you can dig out some snow possibly have to dig out my van because it's only two-wheel drive and you can also use it as a butt sled if uh, if that tickles your fancy. Pretty cheap overall, pretty lightweight, uh, will easily fit in my backpack as opposed to say like an extendable shovel or something like that. Excited to give this thing a test run and then last but not least I picked up a new tent. I went kind of back and forth on this for a long time. I was debating picking up the Nemo Tenchi their uh, winter kind of expedition level tent. But for my winter backpacking and camping, I just feel like it would be so overkill. I typically don't go out in blizzards or even like heavy, heavy snow. At most, I'm usually out in like casual, like little, little snow showers. So I just wanted something to test out, see how it went. And I wanted something freestanding because setting up, at least in New Hampshire, setting up a non-freestanding tent in the snow is doable, but it's kind of a pain and I don't really want to deal with it. 
So I picked up something cheap just to test out, see how it works. It's freestanding and it's the REI Co-op Passage 1 tent. So one person tent will fit me, myself, and hopefully most of my gear. So we'll give that thing a test shot. I have set it up and it seems pretty roomy for a one person tent. I don't imagine it will handle snow loads super well, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, obviously, I'm not gonna try to go out in a foot of snow coming overnight with the thing. And if I am, I'm going to make sure that I clear that snow regularly. <laughs> but we'll see how that thing goes. I think it weighs something like a little over three and a half pounds if you take just the tent poles, the inner fly, and the rain fly of the tent. So roughly three and a half pounds for a freestanding shelter. Pretty cool with me, but we'll see how it works. I'm not too worried about it. It was like $100 if I end up breaking the poles or something because snow gets on it. Not the end of the world. I don't want to do that, obviously, but won't be uh, won't be too terrible, I hope, as long as I'm not inside of it, I suppose. But, but anyways, that's most of the new pickups. I did pick up a Garmin InReach Mini, but I may be returning that and picking up one of the Zaleo I think that's the name of it, uh, satellite communicators. I'm going back and forth right now, but I did want to get one of them. Got a good deal on the Garmin, but I don't know, the Zaleo one looks kind of more interesting to me. And it's cheaper, at least for the initial purchase. I think the plans kind of are relatively equal anyway, but we'll see how that goes. We'll see uh, which one I hold on to, but maybe I'll make a follow-up video of that. So that is it for my holiday gear pickups. With that said, I don't recommend any of this gear. I also don't not recommend any of this gear. All of this stuff is new to me, but even the stuff that I use on the regular, I still don't recommend it. Take what you see in the videos, do some further research, and find the best gear that works for you in the conditions that you hike in. Negative 20 degree sleeping bag for me up in New England, would be absolute overkill more than likely for somebody say hiking in Florida. I'll hopefully have an updated winter gear list video coming up soon, an updated winter layer hiking system video coming up soon, and hopefully more hiking coming soon. <laughs> it's kind of tricky traveling to New Hampshire right now, so maybe some hikes out in Western Mass. We'll see. We'll see what the season brings. Thanks for tuning in everyone. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care.